Mahdoun Salli ala Rasulul Karim. Ma ba'd Bismillah. Surah Ghafir. So Surah Ghafir is a Makki Surah. 85 ayat and 9 rukus. The name Ghafir means the forgiver. Comes from the beginning of the Surah. In which the revelation of Quran by Allah SWT is mentioned. And then attributes of Allah Taala are mentioned. Including one of them which is Ghafir. That he is the forgiver of sins. And another name of this surah is Al-Mu'min, since the surah mentions the story of a believer among Fir'aun who asked his nation, this person asked his nation to accept the message of Musa alayhi salam, otherwise they will be punished. Um, they will be punished for rejecting that message. So what is the connection of Surah Ghafir with the previous surah, Surah Zumur? Towards the end of Surah Zumur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the final abode of disbelievers. Whereas Surah Ghafir begins with his attribute of forgiver to encourage disbelievers to repent and accept the truth. So um, Surah Zumar mentions how disbelievers will be punished and they will be in hellfire. And then Surah Ghafir reminds them of the forgiving attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if they repent and accept the truth, then they could avoid that final abode that is mentioned in the previous surah. And both surahs, Surah Zumar and Surah Ghafir, open with the uh, mention of revelation of Quran as the divine book of Allah SWT, and that both surahs discuss events of the day of judgment, and in particular, the condition of disbelievers on that day. So let's go through a brief synopsis of Surah Ghafir. This surah begins with a declaration of Quran as the divine book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it describes the torment of hellfire and the failed attempts of its dwellers to leave it. It mentions examples of how they will want to escape the uh, Jahannam, but it will not be possible for them. The surah gives examples of destruction of past nations, including encounters of Musa al-Islam with Fir'aun, Haman, and Qarun. And it details the narration of a believer who had hidden his belief in, in Allah, but then he was supporting the message of Musa al-Islam. So he was a person among the nation of Fir'aun, and he was persuading his people to accept the message of Musa al-Islam. So there is a long narration from this person, this believer, and uh, it also gives this surah another name of Al-Mu'min based on this narration. And then the surah enumerates the manifestation of Allah's power in this world through many examples. There are virtues of um, Surah Mu'min or Surah Ghafir as it comes in Tirmidhi. Man qara'a hamim al-mu'min ila ilayhi al-masiru wa ayatul kursi hina yusbihu hufidha bihima hatta yumsiya. Wa man qara'a huma hina yumsiya hufidha bihima hatta yusbiha. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever recites hamim al-mu'min, meaning the surah, up to to him is a return, meaning the first three verses. And then Ayatul Kursi, when he gets up in the morning, he would be protected by them until the evening. And then whoever recites them when he reaches the evening, he will be protected by them until the morning. So let's make a habit. It's a very um, small three first verses of the surah. Combine it with Ayatul Kursi in the morning and the evening, and inshallah you'll get this protection. Let's begin the surah. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حميم أنزل الكتاب من الله العزيز العليم حميم The word حميم is considered among حروف المقطعات meaning the broken letters only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the meaning of حروف المقطعات and the surah is among the first of the seven surahs that begin the letters حميم from Surah Ghafir all the way to Surah Ahqaf. And these surah collectively are called Al-Hamim, so with an Alif Lam or Habamim. It is reported in Fadail al-Quran that Ibn Abbas said everything has an essence. The essence of Quran lies in Al-Hamim or Habamim. And similarly, Ibn Masood is reported to have referred to Habamim as Dibaj al-Qur'an. Dibaj means silk. So surahs of Hamamim are the adornment of Qur'an. And another virtue of Hamim comes in a narration 
where it is used as a protection against enemy, narrated by Al-Muhallab ibn Abi Sufra in Sunan Abi Dawood. He says that a man heard Nabi Sallallahu say, In buyitum falyakun shi'arukum hamim la yunsarun. If the enemy attacks you at night, let your war cry be hamim. They will not be helped. So this is a way of seeking protection at night. And then Al-Aswanat al mentions that uh, the book in this verse, which is Tanzil al-Kitab in Allah al-Aziz al-Adim, so which book is mentioned? The book mentioned here is the Quran, and it is from Allah, who cannot be overpowered. He's Aziz, and he's aware of any and all things. He's Alim. وَغَافِلِ الذَّنْبِ وَقَابِلِ التَّوْبِ شَدِيدِ لِقَابِدِ الطَّوْلِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوْ إِلَيْهِ الْمَصِيرِ The forgiver of sin, accept of repentance, severe in punishment, owner of abundance, there is no deity except him. To him is the destination. So غَافِلِ الذَّنْبِ means سَاتِلِ الذَّنْبِ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ The one who covers the sins of believers. And قابل التوب means التوبة من الذنب من كل مذنب accepting the, accepting the repentance of every sinner. Both attributes are giving a similar meaning if you think about this. But scholars explain that غافر indicates the authority of Allah to forgive without توبة. So he can forgive anyone without even that person making توبة. That is غافر, his ability, his power, authority to do so. Whereas قابل التوب means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power and ability to forgive a person once he repents. So that's the fine distinction between the two attributes. Then shadid al means if someone persists in transgression and stubbornly turns away from the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then such person should be aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe in his punishment. So it's interesting that in the same verse, both attributes are mentioned, attributes of mercy and attributes of punishment. And we see this as a frequent pattern in Quran. And Allah SWT, through this pattern encourages a combined state of hope and fear. As it comes in Surah Hajr, verses 49 and 50, Allah SWT says, wa anna wa anna Declare to my servants that I am truly the forgiving, the most merciful, and that my torment is indeed the most painful torment. And we also see the same state of a person, of a believer, further exemplified in a narration. Narrated by Abu Hurairah ta'ala anhu in Muslim, Nabi Sallallahu said, لَوْ يَعْلَمُ الْمُؤْمِنُ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنَ الْعُقُوبَةِ مَا طَمِعَ بِجَنَّتِهِ أَحَدٌ وَلَوْ يَعْلَمُ الْكَافِرُ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ if the believer knew what was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of punishment, no one would hope for his paradise. If the disbeliever knew what was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of mercy, no one would despair of attaining his paradise. So such is the state of hope and fear that is expressed throughout Quran of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his power and authority to punish. And such a state is also expected for us to maintain until the last at moment of death, as it comes in a narration narrated by Anas bin Malik in Tirmidhi, Anna Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dakhala ala shabbin, wa huwa fil maut, faqala, kayfa tajiduka? Qala, wallahi ya Rasulullah, inni arju Allah wa inni akhafu al-gunubi. Faqala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la yashtami'ani fi qalbi abdin fi mithli hadha al-mawtini, illa a'atahu Allahu ma yarju wa amanahu min ma yakhafu. The Prophet ﷺ entered the home of a young man in the throes of death. The Prophet ﷺ said, how do you feel? The man said, by Allah, O Messenger of Allah, I hope in Allah and I fear for my sins. Nabi ﷺ said, those two feelings are not combined in the heart of a servant in this situation, but that Allah will give him what he hopes and save him from what he fears. Allahu Akbar. The next attribute mentioned in the verse is the tawl, which means sahib al-in'ami wa tafaduli. Literally means the vastness or being need-free. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the possessor of grace and kindness. He is the most generous to his servants. 
and he continues to grant ongoing blessings for which they can never thank enough. Such is the uh, attribute of Allah He is the owner of abundance. ما يجادل في آيات الله إلا الذين كفروا فلا يغرون كتقلبهم في البلاد. No one disputes concerning the signs of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala except those who disbelieve. So be not deceived by their uninhibited movement throughout the land. So jidal means dispute. Whoever disputes in Quran is acting with kufr, and this could be in the form of taunting the verses of Quran. Passing sarcastic remarks about the verses of Quran, raising doubts and contradictions in Quran, and many other forms. Keep in mind, jidal does not include inquiry. So, if someone is genuinely interested in understanding a particular verse or a word in Quran, there is discussion on the various meanings of a verse. All such deliberations in Quran are actually encouraged and indeed rewardable. So that's not the meaning of jidal here. Jidal here is someone who is um, raising doubts uh, in in Quran. فلا يغرورك تقلبهم في البلاد. So تقلبهم means تنقلهم سالمين غانمين. Their movement safely and securely. So tribes of Quraysh used to travel to Yemen during winter and to Syria in summer for trade and commerce. Because they were custodians of Kaaba, these tribes were well respected throughout Arabia, and they enjoyed safety during their travels. Even though Quraysh rejected Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they continued to be held with high esteem, which made them wonder if we were indeed culprits by rejecting the message of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala would have taken away his blessings from us, and they used. To spread doubts on the validity of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muslims with their success and high status and safety, so Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala reassures believers not to be misled by the situation of Quraysh. This is only a period of respite, which will soon be over. And indeed, from the Battle of Badr to the conquest of Makkah, Muslims became dominant and victorious within a span of six years after migration to Medina. كذبت قبلهم قوم نوح والأحزاب من بعدهم وهمت كل أمة برسولهم ليأخذوه وجادلوا بالباطل ليضحدوا به الحق ليضحدوا به الحق فأخذتهم فكيف كان عقاب The people of Nuh denied before them and the disbelieving factions after them and every nation intended a plot for their messenger to seize him. And they disputed by using falsehood to attempt to invalidate thereby the truth. So I seized them, and how terrible was my penalty! A hazab means al umam al mutajazibatu ala rasulihim mu'alinin al harba alayhim groups of nations who declared war against their prophets. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala consoles Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by giving examples of past nations of Nuh alayhi salam and others who rejected their prophets after him. And they even fought with their prophets and attempted to kill them. Nuh alayhi salam was the first messenger of Allah subhanahu wa taala who denounced idol worshiping, and Ahzab includes then all the nations that came after him. And what was the outcome of their transgression? Fakhal tuhum fakay fakana iqab. Allah subhanahu wa taala seized them with severe punishment. وَكَذَلِكَ حَقَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّهُمْ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ And thus has the word of your Lord come into effect upon those who disbelieved that they are companions of the fire. حَقَّتْ مِنْ وَجَبَتْ Justified, necessitated. After mentioning past nations, Al-Sfatala then addresses the disbelievers at the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they also will be treated in the same manner. For their rejection, and they will become dwellers of the hellfire. Let's review verses one to six. Quran is a divine book from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. As this surah begins with a verse confirming that there are three qualities Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned: He's a forgiver, He's acceptor of repentance, and He's the owner of abundance. Raising doubts and challenging the verses of Quran is 
equal to disbelief and respite from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should not be taken as a blessing. We'll stop here, inshallah. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta sami'un alim wa tabalina inna kanta tawab rahim.